much, and hello, Kenosha. It's nice to be back. It's nice to be back. We spent a little time with you, a little law and order. We brought law and order to Kenosha. Right? That's what we want. And hello, Wisconsin. Big day tomorrow. Big, big day. Big day, and I think we're going to do very well in Wisconsin, just like we did four years ago. And it's an honor to be with you. Thank you. And this is a lot of people. This is a lot of people. See, you know what that means? That means we don't have to pay for the microphones because they did a bad job. Tomorrow, we are going to win this state, and we are going to win four more years in the White House. And with your vote, we will continue to cut your taxes, cut regulations, support our police, support our great military, protect your Second Amendment. It's under siege, but don't worry about it. Unless Sleepy Joe got in, then you can forget about your Second Amendment. Defend religious liberty and ensure more products are proudly stamped with that beautiful phrase, made in the USA. Next year, we will be, and you know, we're going to be together next year. We're going to be together for four more years, and we're going to be together forever because we're doing things that nobody's ever done, and we're doing them together. And it was my pleasure to be with you a number of months ago when, when you had a, you were in the news, right? You were in the news. Next year will be the greatest economic year in the history of our country. And I hope you can hear. Can you hear back there, by the way? Yes? No? Hold it. Okay, that was the problem. Huh? You got to get the microphones fixed. What's wrong here? How's that? Is that getting better? And they were supposed to pay these people, right? No. Is that better? All right, come on, let's see. Okay, we'll do this. We'll have to improvise, you know? Sometimes you have to improvise. Okay, you ready? We'll have a cup. Which is better, this one or this one? Which one? This one. Is that better? Can you hear? This could be a very uncomfortable evening for me. All right, we'll figure this out. Come on, let's go. Good job, fellas. I'm always saying I want a perfect mic. Good job. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Is that better now? So this is the first time I've ever used a handheld for an hour, two hours, three hours. Now, we have one more tonight after this Grand Rapids. We, you know, we finished up at Grand Rapids. And uh, we finished up there four years ago and a little bit superstitious. Let's do it the same way. We came here. We came to Grand Rapids. Let's keep it going. And I hope everyone can hear me now, yes? Yeah? All the way back there? All the way back? Good. You let me know. You're not, you're not shy. I was wondering. Everyone's going, I thought they didn't like me. I was saying, I'm not sure. I said, what's going on over here, right? Good. Thank you very much. So under my leadership, our economy is now growing at the fastest rate ever recorded. 33.1 percent fastest ever recorded. We created a record 11.4 million jobs in the last five months. That's a record. 
And while foreign nations are in free fall, we are creating an economic powerhouse unrivaled anywhere in the world. A recent Gallup poll found that 56 percent of Americans say they're better off today than they were four years ago. That's under the auspices of Barack Hussein Obama and sleepy Joe Biden. You're not going to want to have Joe Biden. You know, if we had to uh, see the media, look at all the media back there. If we had, if they had to cover, if they had to cover him for two months, they'd say, we have to bring the president back. We have to bring, we have to bring Trump back. They would be out of business. They would be out of business. If Biden, Harris, and the radical left gain power, they will collapse our economy and send your nation, this wonderful nation, into a depression. That was, is what, you know, they want to, this is the only guy I've ever seen who runs by saying, we will, he doesn't say it like that. He goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> we will raise your taxes. I never heard that before. You know, I've covered politicians. I've been friends of politicians. I've been enemies also. But I've never seen somebody saying, we will raise your taxes. They want to give you the largest tax increase in the history of our country, and we can't let that happen. We can't let that happen. So get out and vote. Tomorrow is the biggest. Tomorrow will be, I think, will be the most important election in the history of our country, and I never thought I'd say that. I never thought I'd say it. So get out and vote. Sleepy Joe Biden will raise your taxes $4 trillion, massively increase your regulations, shut down your farms, close down your factories. How's he doing so far? Send your jobs overseas. <laughs> they start booing him. I don't know. Is this guy really thinking about I mean, is could he really win? Are we serious about this? What the hell is going on? Is he serious? Guy has no clue. He's shot. Some people are shot. He's shot. Did you see him today with the, uh, the aviators, right? The glasses, right? Came on. Very tough. He's very agitated. You know, it's like, sort of like going crazy, I think. Destroy the suburbs, dissolve your borders, terminate religious liberty, outlaw private health care, confiscate your guns. Second Amendment is in deep trouble. Not with me, it's not. It hasn't, you notice it hasn't been touched, right? It hasn't been touched. You think that was easy? It wasn't easy. And indoctrinate your children with anti-American lies. So I just signed an executive order to teach our students pro-American values, right? Pro-American values. Biden has vowed to abolish the American oil and natural gas industries and ban fracking. Now, from your standpoint, you don't like it because you don't want energy costs going up, right? That's what he do. Biden's energy ban will send every state into crushing poverty from Wisconsin to Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania. As long as I am president, we'll remain the number one producer of oil and natural gas in the world, and we are right now. And we will remain energy independent. You know we're energy independent. We don't need foreign nations anymore. But we have good relationships in the Middle East. You know, we're, we're doing peace in the Middle East. You believe it? No blood in the sand. Peace in the Middle East. Joe Biden is a globalist who spent 47 years outsourcing your jobs, opening your borders, and sacrificing American blood and treasure on foreign wars. You know what they call them? The endless foreign wars. Countries that many of you have never heard about. What? What? Oh. I don't know. I think we're doing fine with this mic, right? I don't want to put this guy under pressure. 
You're on stage. You got 27,000 people watching you. Don't get nervous. Don't, he's not nervous. He's a professional. I'll give you the name of his company. Never use that company, no. Nah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. This is okay. This isn't bad. You want to? Oh, you want to just put it in there? Well, that's. A, is it the same mic as the other one? It's a different mic. That means that one's supposed to be better, right? Uh, that's not good. All right. Okay, we'll take that sucker out of there, right? Congratulations. Go ahead. You want to put it in? How's he doing? He's doing a good job, right? Come on. Now we're back where we started. <laughs> See, the whole deal, we're right back where we started. I take the mic out. Okay. Okay. You know what? And then I won't pay the bill of the, you know, company that does this crazy microphone, and they'll do a story, Trump is a horrible human being. He doesn't pay a bill. No, I don't like to pay bills when people do a bad job. You don't either. But I don't know. They look like nice people. They come from Kenosha, so I'm going to pay the bill anyway. What the hell? You know? Well, at least I proved one thing. You know, did you ever see where I lift a glass of water? And I wear the red tie. They're sort of expensive. And, you know, you don't like to spill water on the red tie, right? So sometimes I'll use two hands and because I want to catch the water, because I want to save the tie, because I'm basically cheap, you know? <laughs> so I'll take the water, and I'll go like this, sir. And I'll take a little zip. And they'll say, there's something wrong with him. There's something. There's some No, I'm trying to save. So I go like this. So now, by holding a mic all night long like this, you're going to say, well, there's nothing wrong with that right hand or left hand. <laughs> now, did you ever hear that? There's something wrong. You can't lift a glass of water. No, I have no problem with that. Someday I may, like Joe, but I don't have any problem. Biden was a cheerleader for NAFTA and China's entry into the World Trade Organization. Wisconsin lost half of your manufacture. Think of it. You lost half of your manufacturing jobs after the betrayals. These were betrayals by a lot of people, and Biden was one of them. He's a corrupt politician, and he sold out Wisconsin to China. But he's a corrupt politician. And these people never told you that, and they don't want to write about it. And big tech doesn't want to talk about it. And it's off bounds. And they're not allowed to talk. And we have suppression. We have suppression. This is a media suppression, the likes of which nobody has ever seen. And if you take a look, you've never seen anything like it. <laughs> the last famous last words, right? But, but no, nobody's ever seen anything like it. You know, his son walks in. His son had no job. He left the military. Unfortunately, it wasn't good. And then what happens is the father becomes vice president, and this kid becomes like a human vacuum cleaner. He follows the father into countries. Dad, who are you going to today? Well, let's go to China. And he's a vacuum cleaner, follows the father, takes in money, right? It's terrible. They give him one and a half billion dollars, one and a half billion. One and a, think of it, one and a half billion dollars, and he gets fees off that, millions of dollars a year. There's only one problem. He has no experience investing money. They give him the money. They gave him the money after 10 minutes. I think our Congress has to take a look at that. What do you think, fellas? I think you're going to have to look at it. Can you imagine? You know, I have a lot of my kids here tonight. Can you imagine if my kids said, yeah, Dad, I got a, a billion and a half dollars from China? Oh, I don't think they'd want to write about that, the fake news. Do you think they'd write about that? Then he gets three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife, right? What did he get that for? Remember, I asked that at the debate, the first debate. I said it. Chris Wallace thought it was an inappropriate question. Really? I think? You think? Chris Wallace. No. I must tell you, I think Kristen did a better job. Kristen Welker, right? And I don't mean she was perfect. Actually, some people said she wasn't really very nice. I thought she was nice. Relatively speaking, she was great. For what I get. How about the one Savannah Guthrie? You see that one? That was that was another beautiful. Live at nine o'clock. She's jumping out of a chair. She's like going crazy. But we all do well. You know, I don't get questions like he gets. He gets 
Sir, uh, what kind of ice cream are you eating? Did you see that? They never ask me questions like that. In 2016, Wisconsin voted to fire this corrupt it, — and really, it's like corrupt — corrupt political establishment, right? And you elected an outsider as president who is finally putting America first. You're finally putting America first. And if I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because I'm not a politician, right? If I don't always play by the rules of the Washington establishment, it's because I was elected to fight for you, and nobody has ever fought harder for you than I am. I will tell you, nobody. When the violent mob came to Kenosha, Biden opposed sending in the National Guard. Of course, you remember this, right? He didn't. He didn't want to send in the Guard. He thought it was terrible to send in the Guard. And we sent in the Guard, and we saved Kenosha. We saved Kenosha. I said, you know, I think Kenosha's going to like me. We did a good job. I wish they sent him in a little bit earlier, right? If we had him in a little bit earlier, but that's okay. That's okay. But we sent in — and how, how good did the Guard do, though? Did we do the job? Did they do the job? Biden and Kamala. Does anybody know who Kamala is? That's this wonderful woman. She wants to be your first female president. I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, that's a good reason not to vote for Sleepy Joe, too, right? You don't want to do that. You want to have — we all want to see that happen someday, but we don't want this to be the one, right? But they're waging war on our police. You know that. Your police would — we have a lot of police here tonight. I recognize it. Because — because I went and I met all of the police. I met a lot of great police. Federal police. I met the whole group. And you have great police. I agree with that. But I stand with the heroes of law enforcement, and I was honored to be endorsed by Kenosha County Sheriff David Beth. Thank you, David, wherever you may be. Where's David? Thank you, David. That was so nice. That was so nice. They like you out there, David. That's very good. Appreciate it, David. Thank you very much. And as I'm sure you've heard, Biden's far-left supporters are threatening to loot and riot tomorrow if they don't get their way. If they don't get their way. Are we all ready, David? Everybody ready? Oh, it's, it's, uh, if they know we're ready and if they know we're not playing games, they won't even be here. They won't show up. You know, it's like I brought an old law into existence when I saw them going around all over the country, knocking down statues, right, and monuments. And we signed, we brought it in, and I signed it, updated it, signed it. Ten years in prison if you knock down a statue or monument, and you don't see it anymore. They look and they say, oh, we'd like to knock that one down, but you know what? Ten years is too much, darling. Let's leave now. This is yet more evidence why the radical left cannot be trusted with power. We strongly condemn political violence. We condemn it, and we condemn it strongly. Biden must tell his supporters — he doesn't really have supporters, let's face it. He doesn't have supporters. The guy is shot. He doesn't have — there's — there's an ideology that has supporters, and he's just a vessel. You know, he happened to be the one that got through because Elizabeth Warren, instead of getting out like she should have and letting Bernie take it. Bernie, I got to tell you, he — he is a great loser. He really is. He loses. It happened with Hillary, and it happened with uh, Elizabeth Warren. What she did was incredible. You know, that's a similar philosophy. But Biden ended up being there. Biden ended up being there. And that's the way it is. And he has to tell his supporters. And I think you're going to see something. Look at the people over here. They go all — Hello. Can you actually hear this? Can you hear this? Because this is the worst microphone I've ever used in my life. Can you actually hear me over there? They can. In the back. All the way back. That's good. Thank you. I can't believe it. It sounds terrible to me. His silence is that it doesn't sound great, right? To me, it doesn't sound great. It's all right. Good. You know what? Keep saying it. That bill, he says, don't pay him.
Don't pay him. You hear that, Johnny? Don't pay the damn bill, will you please? A piece of garbage they gave him. It's not even the first rate back. The, the one, the good one is, is it's put to rest. We put it to rest. The good one, we put to rest. All right, don't pay him. But as president, I will ensure peace and order in this country. We are going to have peace and order. And you're going to have a day tomorrow, the likes of which I think people haven't seen in a long time. A long time. You're going to have a red wave. It's going to be a beautiful sight. And you know what? We have a lot of — we have — we actually have a country that, outside of a radical group — and this is a radical group — but we have a country that's very well united. When you look at a group of people like this, it's incredible. And I go from here — I go, I told you, Grand Rapids. We have — they say they have 40, 50,000 people in Grand Rapids. Last night in Florida, we had 45,000 people. No problem. Everybody's in love. Everybody loves our country. It's a beautiful thing. I'm telling you, there's — there's a lot of unity. We just don't complain. You know, we don't complain. We just go out and do what we have to do. But, you know, when we were having that incredible run, we were doing the best, and now we're almost at that same point that we'll be there soon. But our country was uniting. We were getting calls. We had the best employment numbers ever — African-American, Asian-American, Hispanic-American. And we were getting calls like, yeah, maybe it's time we get together, you know, because success brings people together. Success brings people together. And you're going to see that happening, because we're having numbers the likes of which we've never had before. 33 — think of it, 33.1 percent. Nobody's ever had that. The highest was 1952, and it was less than half of that number. So rioting, looting, and arson will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I'm just telling you that right now. I'm telling you that right now, that if uh, people are — you know, I hate to see where they put boards up on a window. This shouldn't be that. It shouldn't be that. But we are going — we are a country of law and order. We have to be. We are. And people — and you notice, I hate to say it, and, but it's true. This is a — these are Democrat mayors and governors. These are Democrat-run cities and states. They're the ones — if you look at New York and Chicago and — how about Portland, which is anarchist? We could solve that problem. We tell the governor, you want us to solve the problem? We solve it in 30 minutes. We solved it in Seattle. We went in. We were going to go in the morning. We announced we're going in in the morning, and they just raised their hands, and they left the night before. And we did a great job in, uh, you know, Minneapolis. We did a great job. We're going to win Minnesota for two reasons. We did a great job. Now, they could have called — they could have let us do it a week and a half early. That would have been nice, you know, right? So that the announcer — remember the anchor? You looked over. He says, this is a peaceful protest. Thank you. What a group. What a group. What a group. I've gotten to know this state very well. You know, you surprised — you know, you're the one that put us over the top. You know that, right? Remember? We were waiting for Pennsylvania. Four years ago, we were waiting for Pennsylvania. They didn't want to call it. Oh, they were going crazy, these people. They were crying. They didn't know what the hell was happening. They said, this will be a very short evening for Donald Trump. Four years ago, right? And they were just — oh, they were looking forward. Remember the woman crying in the convention center, that beautiful? Remember the woman? She was going crazy, glasses. Her head's gone. She was — she's — I wonder where she is right now. She's — they put her away. No, no. This was not a person that I was easily going to convince to be on my side, I think. She was going crazy. But remember, at the beginning, they show everyone's happy, everyone's thrilled. They spent a fortune. It was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in terms of a stage. They had it shaped like the United States. Hello, back there. Are you okay? But that was a hell of an evening. And this evening is going to be — I'm telling you, tomorrow, it's going to be — I can't say bigger. There was — was there ever anything as big? I'll tell you, the election is more important. 
but the evening will be as good or almost as good, and that's okay, too. But that was a first, right? That was a first. That was some evening. Yeah, that was some evening. He won Florida. He won Ohio. He won it all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And because of the microphone, we are giving you back half of your admission price. But considering that you paid nothing, I'm sorry, you're getting nothing. The price is right. Nah, it's fine. But, you know, but wasn't that something, though, where they say, uh, all right, the evening begins, and they say, this is going to be very quick. You know what happened? They did exit polls. And a lot of the people said, none of your business. Oh, who did you vote for? None of your business. That meant Trump. <laughs> and they did 44 percent. You know that? 44 percent of the people said, none of your business. And that meant Trump. They call it the none of your business vote. But almost all of them, I think maybe all of them, were Trump. So they didn't count them. So they said, oh, this is going to be a blowout tonight. But they didn't realize, you know, these pollsters haven't been doing so good with me. And uh, we blew it out. It was incredible. It started with Ohio. Remember? We're going to do great in Ohio tomorrow, too, by the way. Great place. <laughs> Donald Trump has won the state of Ohio. That's a big state. You know, I heard for a year when we were doing this, you cannot win unless you win the state of Ohio. Every night they did it. And then all of a sudden, poll numbers started coming out that I was leading in Ohio. But anyway, but they thought I was going to win by one point. I won by eight. They said, he won Ohio. He won by eight points. What the hell is going on here? That's a lot. And then they said, oh, no. Oh, no. Please don't tell me this. Donald Trump has won the state of Florida. No, no, no. No, please. Please, please, please. Remember Martha Raddatz, ABC? Oh, my God. Oh, please. Please don't tell me this. Oh, no. I'm a neutral. I'm, I'm very neutral. I don't do it. Please. Martha, you're neutral, please, the tears, wipe them away quickly. No, then I, we won Florida, then we won Georgia, then we won South Carolina, then we won the firewall, was remembered North Carolina. That's their firewall. We are going to win North Carolina. They have, they put so much money into North Carolina. But uh, we had a, an asset from North Carolina named Lara, Lara, Lara Trump, married to Married to the legendary Eric Trump. Where are you? Are you two there? We had a we had a big asset there, Laura Trump, and she knew that area so well and they loved her so much. They loved her so much. And they just had another baby and they named the baby Carolina. They named the baby Carolina. And I, I tell you, though, but I, I said we have to give South Carolina some credit, too, for that. Bring them up. Bring them up. Bring them up. Come on up. Get over here. Come on. Bring them up. Bring them up. Great. Come on. Come on, Laura. This one, they love her in North Carolina, South Carolina, Pennsylvania. And they love her in Wisconsin, too. Here you go. Oh, my God. I'm done now, apparently. Wisconsin, who here is ready for four more years? A vote for Donald Trump is a vote for freedom. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote for the future. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote for God, and a vote for Donald Trump is a vote for America. Yeah. How do you guys feel? Are we going to win Wisconsin? Yeah. Let's go do this a second time. Thank you. Great job. Thank you very much. Thank you, honey. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, sweetheart. They're doing a good job. They're working hard, I'll tell you. They're all working hard.
They're all working hard. We have a whole group of families. It's like a family reunion today. Now, well, you know, this is now the big time because tomorrow's the big day. And uh, we have one more stop. See, actually, you know, I did five today, but I could say I could say I did six because in Miami, we finished it close to 2 o'clock in the morning. So let's say I did six today, okay, after Grand Rapids. Joe Biden is bought and paid for by big tech, big media, and powerful special interests. You know that. They own him, they control him, and they know he will always do their bidding. And when he raises $300 million for this campaign in a short period of time, ask him, what deals did you have to make? Because I would be the greatest fundraiser of all time. I can call the Wall Street guys. I know them all. I could say, send me $25 million immediately, please. Yes, sir, Mr. President, I will. But, you know, once you do that, you're totally compromised. You can't do anything properly. Once you do that, and I say, I don't want to do that. And we, we did very well with the fundraising stuff, but a lot of it came in small donations. First time a Republican has ever raised a lot of money with small donations, like $61 average or something like that. Every corrupt force in American life has betrayed you and hurt you, and they're all supported by Joe Biden. The failed establishment that started the disastrous foreign wars, they're supported by sleepy Joe Biden. The career politicians that offshored your industries, and you had plenty offshored, and decimated your factories, they support Joe Biden. The open borders, lobbyists, all the people that killed our fellow citizens with illegal drugs, gangs, and crime, and you know a lot about that, they support Joe Biden, the anti-American radicals defaming our noble history, heritage, and heroes, they support Joe Biden. That's cancel culture. We don't believe in cancel culture, do we? Antifa and the rioters and looters and Marxists and left-wing extremists, they all support Joe Biden. This election comes down to a simple choice. Do you want to be ruled by the corrupt and selfish political class, or do you want to be governed by the American people? It's what it's all about. It's the American people. They've taken that away. They've taken it away. And what's going on with big tech and what's going on with the media is nobody has ever seen anything like it. There's never been anything like it. Nobody has seen anything like it. Where, you know, you can't have a — you can't have — you can't have a scandal if there's nothing written about it. It's pretty tough. A vote for Biden is a vote to give control of government over to the globalists and communists and socialists and wealthy liberal hypocrites. Hypocrites who want to silence, censor, cancel, and punish you. These are real, real trouble. If you want your children to be safe, if you want your values to be respected, if you want your if you want to be just treated with dignity and respect, then I am asking you tomorrow to go out and vote for your all-time favorite president. Because we still have work to do. Remember what I said four years ago? I am your voice, and we will all together make America great again. That's what we're doing. That's what we've done. For the last four years, the depraved swamp has tried everything to stop me. Can you imagine if they didn't do the hoax, the Russia, Russia hoax, right? Russia, Russia, Russia. How about Schiff getting up the other day? The laptop from hell, right? That's — where's Hunter? Where's Hunter? Is Hunter here? Where's Hunter? Oh, he's in a country. I see. His father just left the country. He's going to scam them for a couple of bucks. Where is Hunter? No, but he's got the laptop from hell. And Schiff got up with the watermelon head, right? Like a watermelon. And he goes, this was produced by Russia. These people are crazy, I tell you. 
Ay, ay, ay. What a crazy bunch. But they know I don't answer to them. I answer to you. It's true. I, look, I didn't need this. I didn't need this. I had a very nice life. I had a very nice life. But you know what? It's the greatest thing I ever did because no administration, no president in the first three and a half years, the biggest tax cut in history, the biggest regulation cuts, rebuilding our military. Look at what we've done. Look at what we've done. Our vets just gave a 91 percent approval rating, the highest in history. The highest in history. Now, look at what we've done. Space Force. I never even talked about Space Force. I never talked. I, I realized we needed it after I was in office. I looked. I saw. I saw Russia. I saw China. I said, we need Space Force. First time in 74 years. New one, right? A new one, right, Congressman? We did, uh, we did a great job on it. Together, we will defeat the corrupt establishment. We will dethrone the failed political class. We will drain the Washington swamp. And we will save the American dream. A dream for your children, your grandchildren, right? A dream for your children and your grandchildren. We have the energy and the people to prove the corrupt media wrong. And that's what we have. We have an energy like no movement has ever had in this country. You know, uh, somebody would go in and do well in New Hampshire, as an example. I'm thinking about one man, because I have a lot of respect for him. He did well. He came in second in a primary, and he became famous for many years. What we did is we won all the primaries. We won everything, and then we won the presidency. No, there's never been a movement like this. And now, they go after us illegally. They spied on our campaign. Our campaign. It's not my. It's our campaign. They tried to take out a duly elected President of the United States, and we caught them. And we caught them. And let's see what happens to them. And you know who was a part of it? Barack Hussein Obama and Sleepy Joe Biden and plenty of others, like Comey, et cetera, but plenty of others. But they were a part of it. So now we'll see what happens, right? We're going to see. We're going to see what happens. So, but you have to get out and vote. This is the biggest thing. Get out and vote. Who, by the way, who's already voted? All right, that's a, but we have a tendency to vote on Election Day, a Republican. So let me ask you, who is planning to vote tomorrow? All right, very important. Very important. Is anybody planning to vote for Sleepy Joe Biden? Please raise your hand. Does anybody have the courage to raise your hand? All right. Yeah, get out and vote. Well, that's good. That's a lot of people. So a lot of you vote a little bit early then. Do you trust the ballot system? Do you do early voting or do you do the ballot early? I like early voting. Early is good. Early is good. Ballot is not good. We got a very horrible, horrible ruling from the Supreme Court of the United States, a ruling that puts our country in danger, actually. On Pennsylvania, they have so much time to do this thing. Oh, let them put their votes in and give them plenty of time. You know, we have a date. It's called November 3rd. We don't have a date that says many days later. We don't have a date that says you're allowed to Go and start, you know, putting your vote in later, and we can tabulate it later. Take your time. The whole world is waiting to find out. And there's great danger in that. Number one, there's danger that there's a lot of shenanigans that go on from that time forth. There's a lot of shenanigans. And then there's a lot of bad things that can happen with, with the streets. I mean, you're going to have a, a population that's going to be very, very angry. And you just can't do that. That is such a dangerous decision. That is such a disappointment when I heard that decision. That's a terrible decision. Just you go take a look at it. And I know you people are taking a look at it. But there's not a decision that I've ever heard of like that, where people, if you want to put your ballot in, and if you want to, you go and you put it in two or three or four weeks early. You don't go and put, you had, he said you had a whole year. You had a lot of time. You had a lot of time. So they say, oh, this is so terrible. You know, they gave them extra time and then all the time. So now we're going to be all waiting around because Pennsylvania, we're going to win Pennsylvania. It's a great state. But you know, it's in like you. It's in a total shutdown. They shut it down. The governor is a Democrat. He shut it down. It'll probably open on the 4th. 
It'll open on the Hill announced, ladies and gentlemen, now that the election's over, we're going to open it up, right? But uh, you can't do that. That's a very, very dangerous decision by the Supreme Court. I guess it was a political decision. I don't know what it was. I don't know what they were thinking. And you know what? Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't be speaking this way. I'm very disappointed on behalf of this country that a thing like this could happen, because we could be waiting for weeks before we ever find out what's going on. The whole world is waiting for this decision. It's a very sad, it's a very sad thing, and hopefully it's going to be changed. Hopefully their wisdom, and they have wisdom, hopefully their wisdom will prevail and they'll do something. And lawyers will be going in and they'll be fighting and, you know, but people, in fact, it's all over television tonight. I'm coming from place to place, and I'm, the good thing about Air Force One, it's got more televisions than any hotel room in the world, okay? You have them on the floors, you have them on the ceilings. You have them all over, and, and you see the, the comments that are being made about the decision. And some of the pros are saying, this is a very dangerous decision for our country, because so many things, I mean, they're going to say, well, how many votes short are we? We need 6,000 votes. Well, let's take 6,000 of these. We'll put them over here. Let's take 6,000 of these. It's going to be cheating. It's going to be cheating. It's like they're putting these people, and you know what? We don't consider the people that have been running elections in Philadelphia, to be very honest. We've had a lot of problems with Philadelphia. So that's the story, and hopefully that'll be changed. And I'm sure the people would say, oh, you shouldn't speak that way about the Supreme Court. We've had so many bad decisions out of the Supreme Court that I will speak that way, and that's the way it is. This election is also a choice between a deadly Biden lockdown and a safe vaccine. That ends, and by the way, we're rounding the turn anyway, but we have great vaccines. We have great vaccines coming. We have great vaccines coming, and it's a lot of good things are happening. And, you know, when you look at the therapeutics, excuse me, You're right here. I'm right here. No, I don't think the therapeutic helped me. I don't think I needed it. I'm glad I got it, right? Regeneron, we're going to make it available free to anybody that needs it. We're making it available free to anybody that needs it. Free, but I'll tell you what, I, I'm sure I didn't because I'm, you know, I'm a perfect physical specimen. And I am considered very, very young. I'm considered young for my age. No, I'm a perfect specimen. I'm in perfect shape. So I'm sure I would have thrown it away. But uh, no, but I had it. And the next morning, I was not feeling good at all, I tell you. The doctor said, Sir, I hate to say it, you've just tested positive. I said, Doc. Sean, a great doctor, White House doctor. I said, Sean, tell me, what does that mean? Tested positive for what? Sir, you've <laughs> tested positive for the China plague. <laughs> no. <laughs> he used it much nicer. He said COVID. He said COVID. You know, it's got about 37 names, you know, that we can name it. As. I always like to have a China in there because I like to be accurate. But, but he said, sir, you've tested positive for COVID. I said, I'm in the middle of the campaign. I can't be positive for COVID. And uh, so anyway, so I was. And I didn't feel too good. And the First Lady had it. At least now you know that all those rumors is that she lives in Virginia separate. I mean, at least now you know she lives in the White House. Because she got it probably from me or whatever. I don't know. What the hell? You know, do you ever hear, the First Lady lives in Virginia in a beautiful house over a river or something? No, no, she lives here. <laughs> but at least that, and then, I know, people love the First Lady. They love the First Lady. It's true. They love the First Lady, it's true. They love her. She's doing a good job. They love that whole family back there. They love that family back there. Great family. Hi, Tiffany. So, so then, so Melania has it, but she knocked it out pretty good. And I, I did a great job, you know. I was surrounded by these doctors. Twelve doctors, I've told the story. Each one was a specialist. Johns Hopkins, Walter Reed Medical Center is incredible. You know, that's our military center. It's incredible. And I'm surrounded, right? I'm just surrounded by these brilliant doctors. One thing, when you're president, you get a lot of doctors. And each doctor grabbed a different part of my body. And I said, I don't like this at all. <laughs> but they told me about this one thing, and I said, I really do. I like it. I really, but it was very, you know, a little bit early. 
What we've done with getting it through the FDA has been incredible. Biden wouldn't have this stuff done for years. Well, he had his chance with the swine flu and totally blew it, right? It was a disaster. It was a disaster. Anyway, so I wake up the next morning, and I'm telling you, I felt like Superman. I was so — I wanted to get out. I said, give me another trade deal to renegotiate that these clowns have screwed up. Give me a trade deal to renegotiate, and where am I supposed to be? Well, sir, could you take it easy for a couple of days? And people are sort of amazed. I've done these things. I mean, I do them. These are not easy to do, especially when you have no damn microphone. I mean, <laughs> I'm working harder on this one than I have on all six that I did today. This is the hardest one. Because I have a microphone that was obviously meant for congressmen and senators, not for a president. So it's a little bit off. But that's okay, you know? You have to learn how to improve. Isn't that funny when he put it back in here and handed it to me? But that's the way we started. I thought that was better. Nobody got that. Only this front row got that one. I thought that was very clever, actually. But then he came up to me, the doctor, Sean. He said, sir, I'm sorry to inform you that your son, Baron, has tested positive. Again, I said brilliantly, for what? <laughs> he said, for COVID. I said, oh, that's terrible. Oh, no, he'll be okay, sir. He'll be okay. I said, it's terrible. But he's young, and he's strong, and he's very tall. Have you ever seen? I say, hi, Barrett. 14 years old. He's very tall. He's, he's definitely tall, and he's strong, but he's young. And I said, that's terrible. He said, no, he'll be okay, sir. He'll be okay. And I said, well, I hope. Like 12 minutes later, I say, how's Barron doing, doctor? Sir, uh, he's 100% now. He's... <laughs> Get your kids back to school, okay? <laughs> right? Get them back to school. Yeah, all right. So we're going to mass distribute the vaccine in just a few short weeks. It's going to be coming out very soon, and we will quickly eradicate the virus. Wipe out the China plague once and for all. Get it the hell out of here. We will never forget either. We will not forget. That was not good. You know, we made a great trade deal with China, as you know very well. But, you know, the ink wasn't dry before we got this, and no good. No good. Joe Biden is promising to delay the vaccine and turn America into a prison state, locking you in your home while you're your far-left anarchists are allowed to roam the streets, burn down your cities, hit people over the head. They're allowed to do that. That's why I always call all of these rallies protests. These are not rallies anymore. Because you're allowed to have a protest. You can't have a rally and you can't go to church. You know, you're not allowed to go to church, but you're allowed to burn down the cities with a protest. So we always call these friendly protests. The Biden lockdown will mean no school, no graduations, no weddings, no Thanksgiving, no Christmas, no Easter, no Fourth of July, and no future. Other than that, it's really not a bad way to go. A vote for sleepy Joe Biden is a vote for lockdowns, layoffs, misery, and no fracking. How about the guy? No fracking for over a year and a half. There will be no fracking. He goes to Pennsylvania, absolutely will frack. Okay, and these guys don't do anything about it. If you want a vaccine to kill the virus, a job to support your family, and freedom to live your life, then you have no choice but to cast your ballot for a gentleman named Donald J. Trump. And as I said, and you have to remember this, you know, because during the debate, the debate was good. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. It's a great honor to be with you. I really did, during the Kenosha disaster, I really got to be friendly with a lot of people up here, long before that, because we've had so many different people that we deal with. You have great people. We're going to introduce you to a few of them, but you have great people here. But uh, I really got to know you during that problem, that potential crisis that we put out very, very swiftly once we got called. And uh, it's great. You're great people. You built the country. You're great people. Joe Biden. And as I said, he ran the uh, 
H1N1, he called it N1H1. He couldn't get it right. He still does. He can't get it right. I said, Joe, H comes before N. It's easy to remember. H1N1, swine flu. And he failed horribly, and he was a laughing stock all over Washington, as you remember, and his chief of staff. I don't know why this guy said it, but he made the worst statements. He said, this guy, we have no idea what we're doing. Now, all of a sudden, he's coming, and he's a — he was the one that said, I, I shouldn't close it down to China, heavily infected China, right? You remember that mess? Anyway, then it, now he runs. He said, I should have closed it sooner. It's, uh, it's really disgraceful. Secretary of Defense Robert Gates, a respected man, he said, Biden has been wrong on nearly every major foreign policy and national security issue over the past four years. Right? Four years. He said he's always wrong, and he has been always wrong. I don't believe he's even running. I can't believe the whole thing. I've watched, I watch the debates. You had 27 total killers on the stage, and he was there. And, but you don't have to believe me. Because it's you and because it's Wisconsin, we spent a fortune. And hopefully, that'll work better than the microphone. Try it. Put it on. Joe Biden! Joe Biden! Have you taken this was today he forgot to show up and taken the test why the hell would i take a test come on man that's like saying you before you got in this program you take a test where you're taking cocaine or not what do you think huh or are you a junkie you... by the way this is my little sister valerie and i'm jill's husband oh no this is the... oh you switched on me this is my wife this is my sister they switched on me but i tell you if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. There is not a single solitary reason in the world why, why, as I said, we shouldn't be in a position that everybody, and that's my wife, Jill. Hey, Jill, I'm Jill's husband, actually. And Corn Pop was a bad dude, and he ran a bunch of bad boys. And I did, yeah, he, and back in those days, you show how things have changed. Play the radio. Make sure the television, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. The, the, the phone, make sure the kids hear words. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the, go, you know the, you know the thing. Because if you could take care, if you were a quartermaster, you can sure and help take care of running a, you know, a department store uh, thing, you know, where in the second floor of the ladies' department or whatever, you know what I mean? Well, I'm sick and tired of smart guys. You know, the rapidly rising uh, um, uh, in with, uh, with, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, you have been to a caucus? No, you haven't. You're a lion, dog-faced pony soldier. Why, why attack Sanders? Why, why, why? You're getting nervous, man. What kind of country we're going to be? Four more years of George, uh, George, uh, he uh, is going to find ourselves in a position where, if uh, Trump gets elected, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be in a different world. After lie after lie after lie after lie. You know, we have to come together. That's why I'm running. I'm running as a proud Democrat for the Senate. And by the way, you know, I sit on the stand. And to get hot, I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They'd look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. Rock and I think it's a right for people that bad at kept care. We have to do at least several things. One, we have to uh, depend on what the president's going to do right now. And first of all, he has to uh, tell, uh, uh, wait till the cases before anything happens. Look, exacerbating the need for environmental, for environmental justice. Sorry, as a bug. <laughs> Folks, we got a lot of work to do. I don't really need you to get me elected. It's a case where we cannot let this, we've never allowed any crisis from the Civil War straight through to the pandemic of 17, all the way around 16. We have never, never let our democracy 
sakes second fiddle way that we can both have a democracy and elections and at the same time correct the public health everywhere i've been hearing all around the country you're trying your breast but it never feels like enough it's and here comes the train that he tried to make sure didn't continue to run. No, that's the commuter. All right. No, that's what. But folks, look. Anyway, I am, uh, I am very willing to let the American public judge my physical and mental, fil- my physical as well as my mental fil- fitness. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true international effort to pressure. Thank you. What a good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was just a small little sampling. We had many more. Some were too rough to put on. We just decided. But that's uh, look. This is not what our country needs. This isn't. This isn't about. Yeah, it is about me, I guess, when you think of it. But, but this is not what our country can have. We can't have this. One thing I'll tell you, I learned. President Xi of China, President Putin of Russia, Kim Jong-un of North Korea, and many others, all of them, they're very sharp. They're very smart. They're very sharp. He wasn't sharp 25 years ago. And now it's not, you can't let this happen to our country. That's all I can say. Because it's not a game. We're not playing a game. You know, we have a good time tonight. We love each other. We're having fun. But uh, when you get right there, it's not about fun. We can't let this happen to our country. Joining us tonight, speaking about somebody that's great, is a senator who is my friend. He's my friend. And he is a, he just doesn't stop. He's one of the sharpest, toughest people in Washington. And he is on, when he's on somebody, that person has no chance, or that bad group has no chance. He's the head of Homeland, but he's a respected person, and he's your senator, and we love him. And I'm telling you, everybody in Washington talks about him in the greatest of tones. Senator Ron Johnson. Ron, thank you. And he doesn't stop. You talk about not giving up. He doesn't stop. And we have Brian Style, Congressman. Great job. Great job you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very great job you're doing. Glenn Grothman. Glenn, thank you very much. Great job. Glenn's doing a great job. Darren LaHood. Darren, good job, Darren. What a good group. And you have a wonderful candidate who's going to be running. And you know who that is? He's, where is he? Where is Jim? Jim? Jim Oberweiss. Jim, thank you, Jim. And I heard you're doing well. Glenn, how's he doing in the polls? Okay. He said he's going to win. When he says he's going to win, he's going to win, too. Good. And I heard you're doing very well. Good. Very good. State GOP Chair, Andrew Hitt. How are we doing, Andrew, tomorrow? Good? We're okay? Because he's doing a nice job. But if we don't win, he'll be fired immediately. And a friend of mine and a guy who's done a, a terrific job, he loves his state, Kenosha's own Reince Priebus. Where is he? Reince! Stand up, Reince. Where's Reince? What a nice, what a good guy he is, too. What a good guy. He's done, took me years to learn how to pronounce his name properly. But he's a fantastic person. I'm especially glad to be joined tonight by Don Jr. and Kimberly and... Don. Come on up. They're saying, bring them up. Come on. Come on up. See, he's a, he's a mountain man. He loves to go out the hunting. He doesn't, you don't have a jacket. If you catch a cold, he likes the outdoors, huh? You doing okay? Come on, say something. 
Hello, Wisconsin! Or if I was Joe Biden, I'd say Florida, but you know, doesn't matter. You don't have to be right. But thank you guys. Thank you for the support. We've been seeing it on the ground every day for weeks because unlike the Bidens, we don't have a mainstream media that will campaign for us. We have to do it ourselves on the ground with you guys. So we need you to get out and bring your friends to vote tomorrow. And when we do, we can not only keep making America great again, but we can make liberals cry again. Get out there and do it, Wisconsin. Get out there and do it. Thank you, guys. Good job. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you very much. And I'll tell you, they're campaigning hard. They're all campaigning hard. They're all campaigning. So I see back there Ivanka and Jared. Jared is doing peace in the Middle East. Jared is doing a great job. Peace in the Middle East. Jared, you're going to get it done? You're going to get it done, Jared? I hope so. Come on up. Come on up. Jared and Ivanka, come on. Come on. This is like an old home week for you. <laughs> we are, I look back, the whole family is here. Tiffany, come on up. I see Tiffany. Come on up, Tiffany. Come on up. Here, honey, say something. Hello, Wisconsin! <laughs> you have heard my father talk about some of the things that he's been able to accomplish over the past four years, and I am so proud of so many of them. But I will say, the thing that I am most proud of is unlike politicians, he's never forgot why he ran for president and who he is fighting for. You. Never forgot. It is a beautiful thing to see, and he works so, so hard every single day. And let me just tell you, Washington has not changed Donald Trump. Donald Trump has changed Washington. It's true, it's true, and there's more to come. So now we have to fight for him, and we have to fight for this country that we love so much, and get out and vote tomorrow. Thank you, Wisconsin, we love you, and God bless. Thank you, sweetheart. Jared, would you like to say something about peace in the Middle East to this very small crowd? It's really an honor to be with all of you. I would just say in Washington, if the things that the politicians were talking about were easy, they would have been done a long time ago. But it took a leader like President Trump to come in and shake things up a little bit. But we've seen things get done that we never imagined could happen. And I can tell you, the table is set. There are so many more things to do. And this whole family loves America. We love this country. We love all of you. And we will never stop fighting to get all the things done that President Trump has promised. So thank you for your support. Thank you for your love. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, Jared. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, kids. Thanks, everybody. And I see some people. Do I see Corey Lewandowski back there? Yes. Do I see David? Is that David? Come on. Get over here, Corey. Corey Lewandowski. David, come on. David Bossy. What, what a group. Stand up. Just stand. We don't have to hear from them. The mic doesn't work anyway, so don't worry about it. Great job. Great job. Good luck on television tomorrow. I think you're going to have a blowout tomorrow, okay? But I want to thank, look, I have a great family. I have a family, they're working all the time, all of them, and we appreciate it, special people. And we're really, you know, we didn't need this. We had a wonderful super, it was just going good. Then I said, you know, maybe I'll give it a shot. You know why? Because of trade. It started because of trade. I hated, I watched, it was so obvious, the way we were being ripped off on trade. And I said, let's give it a whirl. And I said to my wife, I'd like to do it. What do you think? She said, well, you have to really want it because you know you will win, don't you? I said, do you think so, really? 
she had more uh, she had a little more security in the fact that if I ran, no, she said, you will win if you, but you have to make sure you want it. I said, I want to do it because we have so many things we can do. I never thought we would have done what we've done, though. We've done a lot together. Together, we've done so much. I mean, you think about all, it, it probably started more, I talked to Ron about it, it probably started with trade, though, because I hated our companies were leaving to Mexico, Canada, China. They were all leaving our country. We had these stupid laws. and horrible tax deals where they had incentives to move to Mexico. They got incentivized to move to Mexico. Somebody had a concept, gee, let's make Mexico great again. You know, I said, no, I want to make our country great again. So that's the story. It's a complicated story, but it all evolved into this evening. And tomorrow we have our big day. And tomorrow I think that, uh, I think it's going to be a really special day. And I hope you can all go out. You'll find the time. and. Go out and vote, and we're going to make you very proud. You're going to make you're going to be made really very proud. I just finishing off for decades, our politicians spent trillions of dollars rebuilding foreign nations, fighting foreign wars, and defending foreign borders. But now we're finally protecting our nation, rebuilding our cities, and we are bringing our jobs and our factories and our troops. Finally, 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 we're bringing them back home to the USA where they belong. For 47 years, Joe Biden viciously attacked black Americans. He called young black men super predators all the time. To every black American, I am asking you to go out tomorrow and vote. It's very important. This is your one and only chance to show Sleepy Joe Biden what you think of his decision to attack you, to jail you, and to betray you. I'm fighting for you. And we got criminal justice reform completed, prison reform completed, opportunity zones completed with the great Tim Scott of South Carolina, and funding for historically black colleges and universities. We got that done. And I say all the time, and sometimes people say, that's a big statement. Then they realize it's true. With the exception of Abraham Lincoln, there's never been a president that has done so much for the black community. And it's my honor. It's my honor. It is my honor. And under my leadership, and by the way, I don't know if you've been watching what's going on in Florida. We're doing really well. And you know what they're talking about? The black community and the Hispanic American community is really, they're liking Trump. What's going on? No, we're doing very well, Florida. Florida is doing very well. So, in conclusion, over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world, and we will end our reliance on China once and for all. It's already begun. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. With God's help, we will defend the right to life, religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms, your Second Amendment, which is totally under siege. But as long as Ron Johnson and your great congressman are there, we will protect it. Right, Len, everybody? We will protect it, Ron. That's an easy one for us. But it wouldn't be easy if he got in. We wouldn't have enough to say about it. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will ensure peace through strength. We will end surprise medical billing, require price transparency, starts on January 1st, and it will be bigger than health care, lower drug prices even more. Favored nations, the drug companies do not like me too much, I will tell you. We'll have the lowest drug prices anywhere in the world. And we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. America will land the first woman on the moon, and the United States will be the first nation to land an astronaut on Mars. We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students, and we will restore patriotic education to our schools. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great 
American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, in God we trust. For years, you had a president who apologized to America. We had, is this true? I mean, we have had, I watched Obama go out and apologize all over the world. He would apologize all over the world. He apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great, great people of Wisconsin. Tomorrow, you have the power, you have the vote, you have the power, really, to save America. We can't go down that path. We will never be a socialist country. We will never be. So get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, get your co-workers, grab your boss by the tie and say, come on, boss. We got to get out and vote, get out and vote. From Madison to Milwaukee, from Janesville to La Crosse, and from, hey, your team is doing well, right? Your team is doing well. Green Bay, Green Bay. Do you like, do you like your quarterback? I do, I like your quarterback. You know who I like? We like Brett Favre. Do you like Brett Favre? You know that Brett Favre endorsed me last week, right? We love Brett Favre. What a great guy. I got to know him. He's a, he's a tough cookie. He's a tough guy. Great, great guy. Green Bay to right here in Kenosha. We inherit the legacy of American patriots who gave their blood, sweat, and tears to defend our country and to defend our freedom. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the oceans, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, raised up the great skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world, and the best is yet to come. Proud citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting. And we are going to keep on winning, 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 winning you. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Wisconsin, we have made America powerful again. We have made America wealthy again. Your 401ks are doing very well. We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. We're proud again. We're respected. We're respected again. We have made America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Wisconsin. Thank you, Wisconsin.